Hi folks, I hope you're well. It's just gone 11 p.m. on the 3rd of June, 2020. Oh, it's not been a bad day today. It threatened rain, and yet we've had no rain, so that's good. Or a tiny bit of rain earlier, but nothing worth worrying about. So that was good. Took the dogs out for a good walk. They were quite happy with that. A few of them went for a little swim. So again, I've got towers in the car. So I can dry them if they go for a swim. And of course, now coming towards the summer, they're going to want to swim more because it's going to be hot and they're going to get hot while going out for walkies. So that's cool. Yeah, I got car sorted in the end. I don't know if you remember. You may not have seen the video when I was talking about it. Well, thanks to a friend of mine, I, well, also me, thanks to me as well, um, I put the wrong fuel in the car. So the petrol had to be drained out. And then when I got it back, it wasn't accurately reading the level of fuel in the car. So I'd arrange to take it back in, which I did this morning. And a few hours later, the phone said it's all sorted. So I went and picked it up and they showed me, they explained what the situation was. Well, in this car, it's got you basically it's one tank but it's two halves one half is underneath the rear seat behind the passenger seat on the passenger side and one half is underneath the rear seat directly behind the driver driver's seat um and when they drain the petrol they drained it out of only one side not both and a lot of the crap that gets in diesel and gets into the tank it was all down the bottom on one side and that basically stuck the float that basically tells you the level of fuel stuck it down so they cleared a lot of that out today not all of it but they got it working properly again but they were saying that at some point i need the tank completely cleaned out <laughs> Great. That's going to be fun. Yeah. Well, because they were saying it's quite a big job. You've got to basically completely take the tank off and yeah, wash it out thoroughly. And it's got to be air dried or whatever. And then um, I probably air force for a hose to you know dry it fairly quickly. Um, because obviously you can't have water in with the fuel. So that water's all going to come out first. So it'd be a case of not having the car for a, a while. But, yep, yeah, see what happens when it needs to happen. Anyway, that's good. So that's sorted out now. And it didn't cost me anything to do that, so that's good. Right, today I was looking at an artist, um... A singer who does movies as well called Hayley Steinfeld. She's been in a few movies and TV programs. Um, she's done some nice songs. But one of her songs straight away spoke to me about a video I'd done in the past about uh, forgiving people. Called The song was called Your Name Hurts. Talking about obviously they've broken up and even hearing the person's name causes pain well that's what i was talking about on the video about that and saying yeah that's why you need to forgive that person and move on from that let that pain go yeah forgive the person move on with your life because if you don't then yeah anything like the name or something similar like if you've been through if you've been attacked by somebody you've been mistreated by somebody you've been abused as soon as you hear on the news of a similar thing or even if you're at a bar and someone's talking about a similar thing suddenly all that pain comes rushing back all that pain even like years later somebody makes a joke about that sort of thing and boom, it's like you're there again and it's because you didn't let it go you didn't move forward. You didn't allow yourself to move forward from it. 
you, know, you wanted to hold on to the pain because you thought that if you forgave that person, that person would be set free from what they've done. Well, as I said in that video, if that person has repented, they are already set free from what they did. You're not because you didn't forgive them. So they're not suffering. Even if you don't forgive them, they're not suffering. You are. And if you forgive them, you don't set them free. They still have to repent. You forgiving them is about you setting yourself free. It's not about you setting them free. It's about you also going to God and asking God to forgive you. Because if you won't forgive others, God can't forgive you. Even if, like in the song, it's simply a case that the breakup was so bad that the person's name hurts. Um, again, you can forgive. You can let it go. But you can also understand that in the short term, these things can happen. You break up with someone, it causes pain, and every time something's said, that pain comes back. Even when you forgive that person, you can still have a bit of an impact for a while at least um, but I understand it from that point is temporary and as I say if, if you have been with someone who you thought was the one then relax even if you're finished with that person relax because there's two points to that. If you were right for each other, if you were the ones for each other, then relax. Get yourself sorted out with God. Make sure you're right with God. You know, ask God, are there things that you need to do to sort yourself out? Are there things that you need sorting out with God's help? If not, then just relax. Because if you are meant for each other, you will be together. Okay, you just need to pray for your partner. You just need to pray for yourself. You just need to get yourself right with God. Do the things that God is asking you to do. But pray for your partner. Love them. Pray for them. Give them space. Whatever space they need, give them that. But if you're not meant to be together, then you weren't with the person you were supposed to be with. So although it's painful right now, God willing, you are going to meet the person you are supposed to be with. And that relationship is going to be a billion times better than the one you've just broken up from. The one that's causing you the pain. Our relationships are tough. Yeah, they can be tough, especially as I say, when you when a relationship breaks up, it's it's hard. Yeah, you know, because even with people that aren't meant to be together we have a way of trying to glue ourselves together to make it work. You know, we do whatever we can to try and fit together. You know, so I say it's like, you know, trying to put a, a circle in a square hole. And it's like, well, you, you can't do that because it's not going to fit. You've got to shape bits off to make it fit. And even then, it's not a natural fit. Yeah, it's not going to be right. And to the person who has to have a bit shaved off to fit the other person, that's not going to be good. If you're with the person you're supposed to be, you will fit. But as I say, we try. We can try and force it. So... As well as shaving things off, we can just glue glue ourselves to the other person. 
think of it as super glue will work because although you can't fit a circle into a square, you can glue them together to a square hole, sorry. You can glue them together, so therefore you're still connected, aren't you? Eh? You're still working sort of as one, even though you're not as one, you're sort of as one, aren't you? Because you're, you're two people stuck together. But then what happens when you break apart? If you've got two people, or even if you if you super glue your hands together and you forcibly remove them, you don't go to hospital and get them to put the stuff on to you know, dissolve the super glue, but you just yank them apart, you're going to lose skin and a lot of skin. It's going to be incredibly painful. To say the least, that is not going to be good. That's going to tinge a lot. So that's why it can tinge a lot when you break up from somebody. Because you're doing it quickly and you've been super glued together. <clears throat> you come apart, you're pulled apart by one or the other or both of you. As you finally realize you're not meant for each other and you pull in different directions. Which is what you're going to naturally do because you're not right for each other. You finally do that and ah, that hurts. If you're with the one you're supposed to be with, you yeah, don't need to super glue yourselves to each other. As I said, there was that song the other day. If the world was ending. If the world was ending when you come over, would you stay the night? Would you love me for the hell of it? Etc. 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 Yeah. Basically, in the song, they they both are thinking the other person thinks they're not, they're not meant for each other. Rather than push it and lose a friendship, they just want to accept. That they won't be together, but they both are in love with each other. They're actually them. They're supposed to be together. That's why they're both saying, "If the worst comes to to worst, and the world was going to end, I want you with me." Well, if you want me with you, then why aren't we together now? Why are we mucking around? Why are we wasting time? Why are we waiting for the world to be ending? If you're not with the person you're supposed to be with, but you know that person, then it basically is a case where you would feel all the time as if the world is ending when you're not with them. That is a natural thing to feel. So for a title for this video, it'd probably be Your Name Hurts. Because that was the name of a song that I was listening to at the time. And I've, I've just gone over some stuff that I spoke about in the previous video, or in a number of previous videos, because when I spoke about the right one, the one for you, I mentioned most of this anyway. Um, it is something worth keep on mentioning, though, because it is a case where... As I say, there are, there are people who are friends, best friends. Different genders, but best friends. Both single. But one of them might actually be with someone. But they both know deep down that if the world was ending, they would want to be with each other. That song means something to them. But they're scared of losing the friendship. Because they think that if we make it, if we get make it physical, if we add sex to the equation, then that could completely ruin the friendship. If we realise, oh, this is yucky, we don't want this. Well, that's because they misunderstand the point of love. 
If you love someone, the whole point of sex is to give that person your love pleasure. Pure and simple is to give that person your love pleasure. I was thinking the other day, just speaking to God about things, about the future and sort of future reminiscence sort of thing, you know, but I like, said to God, you know, if I was with the lady that I like in the future, if we got married, the moment I'm able to give her proper, proper sexual pleasure, love making, where I seriously satisfy her. If anyone ever said, what is your favourite thing to do together? I'd have to lie, because I can't tell them that that was it. But that would be it. Because the whole point of sex is to please that person. And once you've done that, why do you want to do it all the time? And you don't want to do it the reason why most people in the world want to have sex about self-pleasure you want to do it because this person that you love this person that means the world to you you've just given this person incredible pleasure you just made this person's body vibrate it was shimmer And they're looking at you with a different love now. You want that all the time. Not just because of the way they're looking at you. But because of the way you made them feel. That is something that is incredible. And that's something you want to do over and over and over and over again. And you want to do it better every time. You want to learn from it so that next time it's going to be even better, even more mind-blowing for them. So if you have a best friend, don't be worried that the sex could destroy your friendship. If you really love that person, and your point is to love that person, then your love-making is to give that person pleasure. So why do you not want to give the person you love pleasure? Even your best friend, that means a well to you, why wouldn't you want to give that person pleasure? Now, just before anyone takes that in a way that it's not meant, I'm not talking about friends with benefits. I'm talking about you being right for that person. And if you are right for that person, then go all in. Go all in. Test it. I said test all things. Test it. Before you jump. Once tested, if you still think, yes, this is it. Then jump. I have to pause this a second because I've got a chewy waiting to go outside, I do believe. He's licking his lips right behind my head, right by the door, so I best take him out. He probably needs to pee. So I'll be back in a second to finish this video off. I'll speak to you in a sec. Right, right back. Okay, there you go. Well, even that is a good example, actually. What I'm saying, these dogs are my world at the moment. And you know, I've got to do things that are good for them. I've got to make sure they are good, that they're happy, that they're well fed. Give them lots of different variety of food. And give them lovely good walkies to different places. And, you know, give them a walk before bed, that, that way they sleep well. They won't get up during the night. Make sure they do with their pee and poo before bed. 
yeah, even, even then, it's about getting to know them. You know, I heard Chewy licking his lips behind me, <laughs> exactly, because he was by the door, he had to pee. Quite often, he would come up and jump up on me, because he needs to go out. Yeah, and that's the thing, because I love them. You know, I get to know them, I understand, in the end, what they're trying to say, so, yeah, I've got to take care of them. So today they've had some carrot, there was some apple, and because they've had big runs recently, they've had some protein um, drink. I used to get with a protein drink in the past, and I had some left over, so it was still okay, it still tastes nice. It's still going to do the job, so it's been in a container for ages. It doesn't know the date. <laughs> it's not out of date, really, is it, really? It doesn't know the date, does it? So, no, I, I do it up. I'll put it in their, their drinky bottles. So they had that two days ago, and they had more of it today. You know, it helps their muscles to recover. You know, a bit of boost of protein once in a while. It's good for them, you know. Plus, it's strawberry flavoured, so they, they love the flavour. They they quite enjoy that. That's that's a little treat for them. You know, food they've got. I think well, one, two, three, four, five types of food out there. Dog food. Yeah, again, it, it costs a bit, but you know, it's about them. Yeah, you know, they have a very very limited life compared to us, as humans. So. Yeah, make it great for them as much as you can. Yeah. Getting back to the people situation. That's it, it's about learning. Yeah, you, you'll be with someone, even the right person for you. You'll have occasional arguments, but you'll, you'll learn. Because you'll want to learn. You want to, to do better. You won't need that person you know, having a go at you. If you're, if you're a woman and you've nagged a boyfriend in the past, you won't need to nag the person who's right for you. You won't need to. Because that person will want to do everything they can to improve the relationship between you and them. Because they love you. Because you are the perfect fit for them. And you won't be that bothered about the little silly things that they do. Because when, when you're made for each other, you don't notice those things as much. Because you focus on the things that are like, wow, okay. This person wants me. This person loves me. Wow. Wow. Okay. Oh, it is what it is. <laughs> well, I wish you well in those areas, definitely. I hope you can be wise in your relationships. Yeah. For videos like this, you know, it would be nice. You know, in, in, there's a conflict for me. I'm conflicted to a certain degree. I don't mind that there's only a few views per video. That's okay. Um, I make the video is because if it can help one or two people, or even one person, if one person watches it and gets something really from it, great. Um, ones like this, I'd rather it got to the more people because there's so many people who can be helped by this because they're in those situations which they just need that little nudge. You just need that little bit of help to get through it. But in the end, I can't make people watch videos. Yeah. And it's very much the case. I've, I've tried to say to people with regards to videos and stuff like that, and with regards to their stuff, it's like you had that chap, what's his name, the one who... Basically, everything fell apart for him for a while. Um, he challenged another 
YouTuber to a boxing match and lost. But him, he had the world. He had everything. He had a massive, even the clothing company because of his YouTubing success. Um, and then he did the video of the suicide forest in China. And basically everything fell apart. Um, I think he then did another video where he tased a rat afterwards and that really was the end of it <laughs> for him for a while um i think he's, he's built things up since but it's a case where you just don't understand you, you don't have huge figures in videos because you are so talented you have them because you are actually incredibly fortunate yeah people have noticed your videos and that has spread somehow there are an awful lot of talented people who do videos who don't get noticed and who maybe have you know, a dozen views per six or seven videos they do. That's just the way it is. It's just like you've got people who have got incredible voices but aren't major artists. They could be. They probably should be. But they're not. They're working normal jobs. They're just doing whatever they're doing in life. But they's, they've got incredible voices. I saw today, oh, it was beautiful. Um, young girl, it was on the America's Got Talent. It was the new season, episode two. And this girl was doing the, the song that Gaga did in a film. She was 10 years old. And she had basically <laughs> the voice of a person at least three times her age. Ten years old, tiny, tiny person, massive voice. She did the song, she sounded very similar to Gaga herself in that song. Yeah, her voice was really deep and it was like, oh, right, okay. <laughs> she started to sing, it was like, oh, okay. You can see this girl, she's very sweet. Um, she was highly emotional beforehand and afterwards. Um, very, very humble. A bit nervous, but still able to put in such an incredible performance. And you know that with her, there's so many possibilities for her. Ten years old, she's already able to do that. So, if her parents are wise and help her gently she could be the next Mariah Carey the next Whitney Houston yeah the next Lady Gaga she could be huge obviously she's been noticed but whether she continues to be noticed is a different matter time will tell because early on in programs like uh, America's Got Talent or Britain's Got Talent or whoever's got talent, um, the story that the person brings is the thing that gets them the yes votes. It's the second round that they're in. Do they progress to the next round? Because that's where talent really comes in. The story may have got you this far. You're your tough story. But what comes next? Let's go down to you. And there's a lot of people that have very, very sad stories that go on. That. There was one of them on there who... And this is something I will speak about just briefly. Um, he was a young man who... He had a love of dancing. And... His family was an incredibly religious family. Now, first of all, let's understand one thing. Religion is idiotic. To say the least, it's completely and utterly idiotic. This young man's father has said that the young man should either go in the army or be a pastor. So when the young man said, 
that what he wants to do is dance. His father kicked him out of the house, and when the boy left the house, the father locked the door behind him, and has not spoken to him since. This man, who's supposed to be a religious man who believes in God, has failed to understand a simple point, that that child is not your child, that child is God's child. God gave that child to you for you to raise in God's will and God's ways. He did not give you that child for you to kick him out of your thinking house because he doesn't want to go into the areas of work that you deem important. If God has told you specifically as a parent that your child has to either go into the forces or be a pastor, then you may have a leg to stand on. If not, what you've done is bang out of order as a parent. But there you go. That was one of the stories, and it's obvious that um, yeah, most people would be quite enraged at that idea. Um, but at the end of, end of his performance, they phoned his mum. He got to speak to his mum. His mum got to find out that he was on America's Got Talent. And, um, he got four yeses. And of course, his mum was overjoyed at that. So, yeah. Some of these episodes, certainly early on in these things, can be absolutely beautiful. Can be really heart-wrenching. I mean, the one with the 10-year-old girl and her singing, just stunning. Absolutely stunning. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, what's that? That's, these are good things to watch sometimes. But I always say about TV, TV, I don't think TV is necessarily a good thing, but there are some good things on it once in a while. Will you take care? God bless. And I will speak to you soon. That's enough. I've already gone into diverging into many different subjects on this video. It's going on for 32 minutes. That will do. All right. Speak to you soon. God bless. Bye-bye.